Hello YouTube. I got this diesel truck right here from 10 miles a gallon up to 16 miles a gallon in 15 minutes and I'm going to show you how you can too. So by getting this truck from about 10 miles per gallon up to 16 miles per gallon, I have brought up my uh, fuel economy by more than 50%. That's going to help me out a ton on uh, my financial side. I haven't been going to racetracks as much as I want to. I haven't been working as much as I want to using this truck um, because I don't want to pay to fill it up. It is very expensive. It's at least a hundred bucks to fill up. And I've been a lot more conservative about using the truck because of the cost of fuel. Now that it has a more reasonable fuel economy, I think I'll be able to tow a lot more and go to a lot more track days. And I'd like you to share this video if it helps you out. I want you to let everyone know about it. I want you to like it, comment on it, subscribe to the channel, hit notifications because there's gonna be a part two to this where I'm gonna try and get this truck up to 20 MPG towing. I don't know if I can, but I know I can get it better than the 16 it's getting right now. Um, I want everybody to have access to this information that has a 6.7 Ford. And I even want people who have different trucks to see this because it made such a big difference in my truck that I'm sure every single truck that has an EGR that's a diesel is going to benefit from this information. So again, please let everybody know about this because collectively as diesel owners, we should not be paying the fuel prices to drive around at 10 miles per gallon. It's insane. It's absurd. A 7.3 Ford will get 18 miles per gallon towing. Nobody can be justifying paying this much to drive a newer truck that's getting the worst fuel economy possible. All right, you guys, so here's the engine bay. It is a terrifying clusterfuck. It is hard to tell if you're coming or going when you look at it for the first time. But this video is gonna be called part one of many, and I am only gonna be focusing on this region right here. So what this is, is the charge pipe to the motor from the intercooler. So, a lot of people have issues with them breaking. I can tell this one's already been replaced before. Um, the EGR dumps into the intake right here. So there's gonna be a lot of carbon buildup in there. And there is a throttle body. Right there you can see the actuator for the throttle body, um, like a butterfly valve. And that butterfly valve is coming out and the carbon buildup is gonna get scraped out of that venturi area where the egr collects all right here are the tools that will be absolutely necessary you will need a torx t15 you will need an eight millimeter socket a screwdriver and plenty of gloves because the mess that's inside of that intake spreads very easily and it's very sticky goop and that goop is egr residue and oil residue Get started, you reach your flathead screwdriver in right here to pull this clip out, then you weasel this um, charge pipe out of your way. Next up, you pull this yellow cl locking clip out of that red connector for the throttle body right there and slide the, thro the connector off. Make sure to plug that in um, when you start the truck up, before you start the truck up or else it will throw a check engine light. Now we pull out these four eight millimeter bolts that hold the throttle body in. And she's out. Now this is the most important part is you take your T15, which fits into these screws right here that go into uh, that throttle blade holder and you remove the screws and then push this butterfly valve out the side take it out you don't need it anymore the truck will not throw a check engine light it will not run bad it's not going to hurt it diesels are not supposed to have a throttle body next up we're going to take that screwdriver we used to pull that clip out and we're going to scrape these walls there should be this truck had 270,000 miles and there was about three-eighths of an inch of carbon buildup and goop along the entire wall right here and into that Venturi. Now the method I used was scraping with the side very hard like that. 
and then shoveling whatever fell out out the hole um, a little bit can go through the motor and it's not going to hurt anything but you want to get majority of it to fall down there by the serpentine belt so you scrape and then you shovel it out it's going to allow a lot more air to pass through that passage and we want air we have a turbo it's pushing boost it, it wants air it already knows that it's going to inject a certain amount of fuel so we want to get that stoichiometric mix better um, by flowing the air into the cylinder. And all that carbon buildup from the EGR is a massive restriction along with the throttle blade. Even though I've already done this once before, I can still get a massive amount out of here on my second run. Make sure to wear your gloves because this stuff gets everywhere and it's super hard to wash off your hands. An insane amount of carbon buildup from the EGR and maybe a tiny bit of oil from the turbo um, has built up in there. I got so much on my second round. Oof, I fell. I got so much on my second time getting in there that it's absurd. Um, in one of my next videos, I'm gonna see if I can make some kind of a restrictor plate for this EGR right there and see if I can help reduce how much EGR is gonna flow in there. It is terrible for the engine absolutely god awful for the engine um i'm a fan of right to repair i believe that once you buy something you own it and what all this does is help them sell new trucks when your shit's broken because it's gonna break with all this stuff and it's gonna slow down and get bad mileage and make a new truck a lot more appealing it also fuels the petroleum industry a lot when all the trucks on the road are getting half the MPG that they should. All right, I've scraped as much as I can from this throttle body area um, and EGR entrance area inside the front part of the manifold. And make sure to subscribe and hit the notifications because next time I do a video on this truck, and it's going to be a little while because it's going to be a very maintenance intensive thing, I'm going to see what I can do to hand make a intake manifold out of steel pipe that is a very straightforward free-flowing design um, that also makes it a lot less overwhelming to work on this truck and i'm going to see what i can do about making a block off plate or a restrictor plate for that egr um, right now i'm having a huge hard time finding someone to um, give me a delete tune to turn the EGR off and get the DPF off of here. But for now, this is putting a band-aid on a bullet wound and making it so I can actually use my work truck and afford to run the work truck and go to the racetracks and be a race car driver. Here we go. She's all back together with a lot less restriction in the air intake. Also, as a side note, I cleaned out um, the foam pre-filter and replaced the air filter. And that also got me about 0.3 to 0.5 MPG better. And here we go, after a lot of highway driving, um, a lot of hills, doing 80 the whole time, and a very little bit of city driving, and two traffic jams. I'm still pulling 15.2 and about to hit 15.3 average. And that's with stop and go, stop lights, and two, tra two very long traffic jams. So this definitely works, and uh, you might want to do it to your truck as well actually even hitting 15.4 miles a gallon now so i'd really appreciate it if you could give this video a like to do something that is a 15 minute job actually takes me hours to film and edit and publish um it takes a lot of effort out of me but i really felt like sharing this information and helping out hopefully a lot of people um by getting that information out and showing that it worked for me and it didn't put the truck into limp mode um, also comment below. Let me know if you have questions about this. Let me know what you want to see next. Um, and comment below if you think I'm full of crap and that this isn't real and that I just made this up because I want to see how many skeptics there are. Um, it's worked out great for me for the first 80 miles. I was getting about 15 and a half MPG, um, because I was beating on it and repeatedly going, um, in a loop around an area that had a lot of hills because I didn't want to like fool myself into thinking that I made it better when I didn't. 
Um, I also threw a 240 on there and did a quick 30 miles with the 240 on some flat road and pulled 16 and a half MPG. I'm very happy with it for now, although I think there's a lot more room for growth later. So yeah, please like and comment. Tell your friends. Bye. Now, I know that this has worked for me with my 2013 um, seven or 6.7 liter Super Duty, but I assume this will also work for anyone else with a truck that's like 08 and newer. Um, so even if you don't have a 6.7 power stroke that's the same as mine, I think it's something that you should be at least looking into if your truck is an emissions truck.